Ah, Christmas. A time for giving, a time for togetherness, a time for family. Well, actually a time for giving your family the cold shoulder so you can glue yourself to the TV and watch some classic Christmas specials, like A Charlie Brown Christmas or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But be warned, for every plate of cookies, there's a fruitcake to sour our holiday spirit. I'm Neil with Channel Frederator, and today we're counting down the five worst Christmas specials. Now, we're keeping it strictly animated, so we'll spare you the 137th lecture as to why the Star Wars Christmas special is terrible. Let's reach under that tree and unbox some coal now, shall we? <laughs> Number 5, A Chipmunk Christmas Though the chipmunks are more than capable of making a catchy Christmas tune, their transition into the realm of animated Christmas specials is a whole other story. Actually, it's pretty much the same story told in many Christmas specials time and time again. How giving to the less fortunate makes the world a better place. The story is set in motion when Alvin and his less important brothers encounter Tiny Tom, I mean Tommy, a boy suffering from cholera, a very deadly disease. Alvin decides to give Tommy his prized harmonica to ease his suffering. In an inconvenient turn of events found only in mediocre screenplays, it turns out that Dave has booked Alvin to play the harmonica at Carnegie Hall on Christmas Eve. Fearing that Dave hates generosity and peace among men, Alvin keeps his good deed a secret and decides to replace the harmonica by earning enough money to purchase a new one by the end of the night. For whatever reason, Dave considers the chipmunk's honest efforts to make cash greedy and cruel, probably for the sake of creating tension. Eventually, the special becomes bored of itself and Alvin's efforts bear no fruit, until a deus ex machina appears in the form of Mrs. Claus, who offers Alvin a brand new harmonica in exchange for a tune and possibly his soul. Yep, that really happened. But what about Tommy? It turns out Alvin is the chipmunk messiah because the harmonica he gave to Tommy miraculously cured him of his cholera, news that happens to calm the wrath of tyrannical Dave. So you see, kids, we learned some lessons here. Number one, material goods alone are enough to cure even the deadliest of diseases. Number two, any attempt to make money is evil. And number three, seeing a chipmunk play the harmonica at Carnegie Hall is worth the price of admission. Things we'll never forget, because it's not worth our time to learn in the first place. Number 4, Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July Long before Marvel had their own successful cinematic universe, Rankin and Batson attempted to make a Christmas cinematic universe consisting of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, and the Santa Claus from Santa Claus is Coming to Town. If you never knew this, it's probably because you didn't see the abomination in which they all came together, Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. The special blatantly ignores the continuity established in all previous specials, like making Rudolph a child again and establishing that his glowing nose is a divine gift bestowed upon him by the gods. Though if he commits just one bad act in his life, he'll have this power taken away from him and suffer from an eternity of nasal dysfunction. This is no typical Christmas special, it's a summer Christmas special, whatever that means. Maybe it's because it feels more like a summer blockbuster and the original Rudolph had a heinous love child. The stakes are higher than they need to be as Rudolph sets out to stop an evil wizard named Winterbolt from banishing Santa Claus from the North Pole so that he can conquer the Winter Wonderland himself, which he could easily do since he he possesses the power of suggestion, but never once uses it to convince Santa to leave the North Pole. That would have ended our suffering here so much earlier. He instead goes about a completely convoluted plan that involves sending Rudolph to the United States to help a traveling circus from going bankrupt so that he can later frame Rudolph for theft with the aid of a bizarro Rudolph. You're probably wondering, what is Frosty's role in this epic crossover? Other than Winterbolt's desire to take his magic hat and use it to create an evil army of snowmen, which he could easily do through his his neglected power of suggestion, this special doesn't really give us an answer that makes sense. With its tornado of a narrative, needlessly scary tone, bland and randomly triggered songs, it's no wonder you've probably never seen this special on TV, let alone heard about the train wreck that it was. Until now. Sorry about that. Number 3, He-Man and She-Ra, a Christmas special. No matter how bad the other specials on this list are, they were at least somewhat grounded in the holiday and had a right to be called Christmas specials. He-Man and She-Ra, a Christmas special, is merely a vehicle that was used to further promote an extremely popular line of toys that children across America were already begging their parents for. The result is one of the most embarrassing toy commercials of all time. This He-Man adventure revolves around two of the target demographics, sorry, I meant children, who have been accidentally transported to Eternia and attempt to educate He-Man and his friends about the most wonderful time of year. Unfortunately, every time the kids attempt to explain what Christmas is, the special conveniently cuts to another scene because, you know, it's the 80s 
Hades and everyone is too scared to talk about Jesus on TV. The highlight of the special, well, rather its low point, is the unsung hero Skeletor. That's right, this special goes out of its way to humanize He-Man's arch nemesis and even have him be the one responsible for saving Christmas on top of it. Imagine that, in all the years that He-Man and Skeletor spent warring with each other, He-Man could have simply worn a Santa suit, given Skeletor a puppy, and achieved everlasting peace in Eternia. So unless you've got a thing for an unholy merging between How the Grinch Stole Christmas and He-Man, stay away from this special at all costs. Number 2, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Yes, we included this in both of our Christmas videos, it's that bad. Christmas songs have a pretty good track record when it comes to being adapted into animated Christmas specials like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, and The Little Drummer Boy. Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer is a cautionary tale that warns us that not every Christmas carol produces an animated gem. Sometimes you'll just get a big ol' lump of coal. Beyond the fact that this special looks like it was animated using an early version of Flash, the story deviates so far from the song that you'll swear that the writers were the ones drinking eggnog, possibly laced with something much stronger. Santa accidentally runs over the titular grandma, which quickly turns into a soap opera when the hit causes her to lose her memory. Despite being all-knowing and all-seeing, Santa has no idea who this lady is and sensibly kidnaps her so that she can recover over the course of a year while her family panics. At one point, the special becomes CSI North Pole interlaced with some of the most randomly triggered song and dance numbers I have ever seen in a Christmas special. When the truth about Grandma's disappearance comes to light, it becomes a very Law & Order Christmas, spending several scenes inside of a courtroom in a case devoted to suing, quote-unquote, the pants off Santa. You know, for the kids. And finally, the worst Christmas special of all time, The Christmas Tree. Have you ever wondered what would happen if The Room merged itself with an animated Christmas special? The answer of your oddly specific what-if scenario is The Christmas Tree. The animators put as much effort into this special as they did with the bland and uninspired name. The animation is incredibly limited, and we rarely see a character move anything other than their mouths or eyelids, while the character designs look as if they were made for a shady Redbox version of Disney Cinderella. The story revolves around a comically evil headmistress of an orphanage that abuses the children simply because it's an easy way for the audience to empathize with the story's orphans. Unfortunately, these orphan children are akin to the children of the corn, worshipping a mighty pine tree that they lovingly referred to as Mrs. Hopewell. Things start looking up for the children, though, when the headmistress hires an assistant named Judy, who comes to live at the orphanage with two children of her own. When she attempts to bring Christmas to the orphanage, it becomes clear that Judy prefers the orphans over her own children, and she's willing to send them on an expedition to find Santa Claus in the deadly, bear-ridden Arctic without any supervision whatsoever. Beyond the horrid art style, lazy animation, abysmal voice acting, incoherent plot, and featuring one of the creepiest Santas ever drawn, this travesty's biggest sin is failing to understand the true meaning of Christmas. The movie's moral message has nothing to do with giving to others or helping the less fortunate because it's the right thing to do. The message is simply that you'll always win if you're good, and if you're not good, Santa Claus will smite you with a bolt of lightning, probably because coal is worse for the environment anyways. Once again, I'm Neil with Channel Frederator, and thanks for watching our list of the 5 worst Christmas specials. Which special turned you into a Grinch? Are there any other horrible specials that are worth warning the masses about? Sound off in the comments below, and if you like getting more from your cartoons, subscribe to Channel Frederator, because remember, Frederator loves you.